<laughs> oh my gosh, you brought the ukulele. Of course. Well, you wanted a song, right? <laughs> I did. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Let's, Let's go to a strip club. <laughs> Yay. Let's go to a strip club. <laughs> Big hi. Hi, how are you? Oh. My hands are cold. Okay, you ready? Oh, let's do this. I want to let everybody know that we are going to Dante's. Dante's, where Because it all I want to hear the origin story oh my God. <laughs> of Susan Storm Large. And yes, that is your real name. It is my real name. But a girl named Storm Large, who's six foot tall at age 12 with no boobs, you know, <laughs> she's. She's gonna get such an easy pass in school, oh, right? Yeah, no way. Especially when she's loud. <laughs> loud people, loud different people, just get left alone. Oh, that's hard. It is. But again, I gotta say, it works for you. It does you now. Turned it around. Builds character. You even said you were a chubby kid. I was chubby. And now I, you're svelte and six feet tall, and everybody I too hard. envies you. <laughs> I'm anemic and I can't. Oh, I gosh. can't keep my food. How many dates a year do you play, on average? I'm on the road like 200, 250 days, I guess. I would say for every show, there's probably three days of travel. So, blah, 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 blah. 100 and... <laughs> blah, 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 Are you lot. as discombobulated as you sound? How do you keep that schedule? My band calls me the supercomputer. I have this amazing knack to remember not only like dates, where we're going to be. I also can remember like random weird <laughs> 70s jingles. And songs like weird, like my band will just start a song just as a party trick, and I'll just finish it like Budweiser, old Budweiser jingles. Do it. Oh, here comes the king, here comes the king number one. <laughs> Budweiser beer is rated second to none. Okay, I believe you, I believe you. When you see Bud, oh my god, and then if it plays on a loop in my head, so it's like a sort of a supercomputer that you spill the beer on. I guess. It's like a kink, kink, kink. Like the whole sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, probably two out of three, but not. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. You couldn't possibly maintain all that no. if you weren't like pretty straight right. and narrow. Right. No, you gotta, um, especially as a singer, because your throat is so, it's so delicate. You have to treat your body kind of like an athlete. Enough sleep, enough water nutrition. It's a great job, but it's it's a lot of work. Are you just a goddess and you don't, <laughs> like the forces of gravity and everything else that we have that affect the rest of us don't affect you? No, they Please totally share are. your secrets because no, I need to know this. You're very sweet. No, I'm absolutely getting older. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing my body change, my skin change. You know, I'm I'm starting the process of menopause. I spend a lot of money on on creams and stuff and I'm not opposed to getting I don't know, something. I, you know, you do that thing where you're looking in the mirror. I do that. We do that. We're like, Yes, oh. I totally do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I bought, <laughs> I bought, I bought boobies. I went through, uh, like, like, what was this? How many years ago was this? God, like 15, 15 years ago or something. I, I bought, I went through, I went through, um, through puberty again with my hands on the wheel this time. I made my, my boobs a little bit bigger, uh, cosmetically, surgically, and was super happy about it. Actually, I tried to... <laughs> I tried to write him off on my taxes, <laughs> and my tax guy laughed, and he goes, "You really, you can't, you, you're kidding." And I was like, "I am not kidding. I want to write off that surgery." He's like, "You can't write off elective surgery." I go, "Well, I want you to take a look at what I earned last year, and what I earned in my boob year. Thirty <laughs> percent increase. Wow, thirty yeah, percent okay. increase for your fiftieth birthday. Yes. So tell me the big plans that you have, because I think this is again." So fabulous and utterly <laughs> terrifying to the rest of us. It's who really, are it's terrifying 50. for me too. Yeah, no, it's terrifying for me. But uh, long story short, Vicki Gorenson, who owns Mary's Club, was going through uh, intense medical treatment for cancer. She was at Thomas Lauderdale's holiday party, and she just looked really sad mm. and dejected. And so I sat with her, and I was having a drink, and trying to cheer her up this is when I said uh you're gonna live because on my 50th birthday we're gonna sell tickets the highest bidder and give it to charity and I'm stripping on my 50th birthday how do you like that <laughs> and she said you would do that I'm like yeah I'd do that and then she promptly got better <laughs> and you got sober and I got sober and you and are stripping like, holy shit. 
God, please let my boyfriend <laughs> forgive me. Speaking of which, <laughs> yet another non-traditional thing. Surprise, surprise, right? Nothing about you is traditional, girl. I know. So you're 49. Yes. And you have a new love. It's yes. not that new. You've been dating almost, what, a year? Almost a year, yeah. Tell me about your boyfriend. <laughs> what else is non-traditional about your boyfriend? He's 30 years old. He's really young, but he's he's more man than I've ever known, really, in that way. He's awesome. He's kind. He's big and strong, very masculine, but his heart is absolutely so open and so kind and thoughtful uh, and old-fashioned. And so hopefully he's not going to lose his mind when I, when I strip for charity. <laughs> and... You're in love. Yeah, I am in love. You're I haven't in been love. in love in a long time. Have you ever thought with all the stuff that you went through with your mother, being mentally ill and, you know, just the upheaval in your family, did you ever want to become a mother? This is tricky because I didn't, but I've been pregnant a couple of times. Um, and I had an abortion um, September 12th, 2001. So right after nine 11, right after nine 11, I was in the clinic, the TVs were on and people were jumping off the buildings. And, uh, there was a lot of us in this waiting room. I'm sure there were a few girls there who had planned to have a baby, but saw it happen. And we're all just kind of holding hands in the waiting room of this clinic with the TVs on. I don't know why they had the TVs on, but it was just everyone was still in shock. And then one by one they called our names. And um, so I made a deal with God, um, with, the, with the baby who I called Dot, because that's all was was a dot. And, uh, and I said, I cannot take care of you. I can't protect you. I can't take care of myself. Um, the world is insane and dangerous. And so I need to let you go right now. But if you ever, if you ever come back and you want me to be your mother, I will do absolutely everything in my power to, to do that and to give you the best life I can. Do you ever regret it? Um, no, no, because it didn't, it wasn't in the cards, I guess. People have said that, they're like, you're so courageous with your, your truth, living your truth. And I was like, you know, I don't think it's courage, it's I do it so no one can hurt me. Mm -mm. I was like, you got nothing on me because it's already out there. You're going to say it first. I'll say it first and you can, you can try to hurt me with things you've discovered about me, but you... The only reason why I discovered him because it's the, I, I'm an open book, literally, literally and figuratively. I'm friends with uh, our Congressman Earl Blumenauer, and he's been in public service 43, 44 years, and he always threatens to step down and offer me a run, and he wants me to run for Congress. And I was like, yeah. Would you ever? Uh, I think I'd get hauled off in handcuffs like my first day. No, there'd be so many people would you I want ever? to punch. Come on, I don't would know. you ever? You don't know, so you can't say no. I know, I can't. That's the thing. I can't say no, but I always say there's a lot of naked pictures of me out there, but they're all awesome. <laughs> people who run for office, especially in this day and age, you are not gonna, you're not gonna have any secrets. There are no secrets anymore. Mm. So that's also an interesting concept that. Pretty much nothing is private. That yeah. can't be true. Something has to be private. So tell me something that people would be surprised to know about you. You can't be totally an <laughs> open book. Well, I protect, I protect my nieces. I protect, I protect Ben. I protect my love uh, because people want to know about the people connected to me, mm -hmm. and that's none of their business. I will go down fighting, protecting their privacy. And um, yes, there's no privacy, and yes, anyone can find out anything, but children and relationships, 
they're absolutely off limits. You know I would not get you in this car and let you go without you singing for us. <laughs> Do you have something that you love? You never know a woman's heart. You just can't see that far down. Such a long and pretty road that you'll never go. Well, you might haunt her every dream and you might have a name she screams and you can tear her whole world apart and never know no no <laughs>